Hello, and welcome to your practice. Today I have a very special practice for you. It is yoga for COVID recovery. So I myself am recovering from COVID. Um, I, this is my second time having it. The first time was about nine months ago. Um, it, w nine months ago, wasn't too bad, felt like a bad cold. This time, much more mild. Um, it was pretty much over in three days. Um, but I wanted to do a um, yoga for COVID recovery because I feel that it, it really helped me. I had to teach my weekly uh, Wednesday night Zoom class and I wasn't feeling my best. But about halfway through, um, we just did some nice gentle stretches. I told everyone that we were going to do gentle stretches because I was recovering from COVID. And about halfway through the class, I felt better. So we're just going to take some nice gentle stretches. We'll be on the floor the whole time. We're going to be um, deep, deep breathing, breathing with our movement. We're going to be moving our lymph fluid. So our lymph fluid is so important in our immune response. So we'll be moving lymph fluid. Um, and at the end of the class, I'm going to show you two breathing techniques. So really important to keep the lungs breathing, to breathe deeply. So I'm going to show you two breathing techniques. First one is alternate nostril breathing. And the second one is Brahmari or bumblebee breath. So that being said, let's get started down on our backs. Um, have a yoga block handy. If you don't have a yoga block, you could do without it or you could use a, a folded towel. Um, we'll be resting our forehead on it just to give us a little bit more space in the lungs. So have a yoga block handy if you have it or maybe just a, a folded um, towel, bath towel. So let's come down onto our back and we'll just start with the knees bent. Start with the palms up. Adjust your hips and shoulders and just feel your body resting on the mat and start to tune into your breath. Just observe your breath. Don't try to change it, just observe it. How, how deep or shallow is it? How fast or slow is it? Just breathing, just being present here with your body, with your breath knowing that your body is always trying to heal, always trying to repair, always trying to rebalance itself. We, we don't even have to tell our body to do that. Our body has this innate knowledge uh, and it knows how to repair and heal itself. So now start to slow down and lengthen your breath. Try to feel your belly rise with the inhale and fall with the exhale. Relax the neck, relax the shoulders and arms, relax the back and the hips and the legs. Good. With your knees bent, feet on the floor, let's just rock the hips a little side to side. So just getting a little bit of movement in the lower body, the hips and the low back. So when you have COVID, sometimes the body feels stiff and achy. So just a few little uh, rocks side to side here. Let's bring the knees to center. Stretch your right foot up to the sky. And we're going to circle the right ankle in one direction. Nice and slow. Let your toes wiggle around a little. So what we're doing here is warming up the leg and the ankle and the foot. But we're also moving limp fluid moving lymph fluid down from the foot and ankle and calf into the uh, upper leg, the hip area and the groin area where we have some large lymph nodes. Let's circle in the opposite direction. So gravity helps our lymph fluid move. So just imagine that lymph fluid, it's a clear substance in the body that's responsible for your immune system. Let's point and flex the foot. It's moving down the leg. Gravity is just having it move down the leg. And then once we do work both legs like this, we'll go into a posture to uh, let that lymph fluid move through the 
lymph nodes. Let's keep our right foot flexed. Exhale, bring the right knee into the chest. I'm gonna hug the knee, relax the shoulders and the neck. I'm gonna take some nice big breaths into the low belly. Here, depending on how your back and your total body feels, you could keep your left knee bent, left foot on the floor. But if it feels okay to your low back, stretch your left leg out. Lengthen from the hip and you'll have both feet flexed. So big breaths into the low belly and let's even stretch this left arm up overhead, palm faces the sky. We'll spread the fingers from the waist down, lengthen down through the leg, push through the foot. From the waist down, lengthen up through the rib cage and arm up through the fingers as you breathe deeply into the low belly. Good. Let's come out of it. Bring the left hand to the right knee. Bend your left knee and bring your right foot down to the mat. And we're going to rock the hip side to side a couple times. Bring the knees to center. We'll stretch the left foot up to the sky. And we're going to circle the left ankle in one direction, nice and slow. Let your toes wiggle around a little bit. So just warming up this left leg and ankle and foot, but we're also moving that lymph fluid. We're letting the lymph fluid drain from the extremities of the foot and ankle and calf down to the upper leg, hip, and the groin area where those big lymph nodes are. Let's circle in the opposite direction. So nice belly breaths while you're here. So we, the whole class, we're going to be working on some nice, slow belly breaths. So try not to take shallow breaths just in the nose. Let's point and flex our left foot for that good stretch in the calf muscle, the whole back of the leg, getting a good stretch. Let's keep our left foot flexed. Exhale, bring the left knee into the chest. We're going to Hug the knee, relax the neck and shoulders. Staying with the right knee bent, or if it feels okay to your back, right leg stretches out. Both feet flexed if that right leg stretches out. And let's stretch the right arm up overhead, palm faces the sky, spread the fingers. So from the waistline down, pushing down through the leg, through the bottom of the foot, from the waistline up. Stretching up through the rib cage, right shoulder, right arm, all the way through the fingertips. Big, slow breaths into the low belly. So just this simple breathing on your back is going to be great for COVID recovery. Let's come out of it. Bring the right hand to the left knee. Rebend your right leg. And then bring your left foot to the floor. And we'll rock the hips a little side to side. A few times. Knees to center, inhale with your exhale, hug both knees into the chest. And we're gonna roll the whole back side to side. So shoulders and hips roll side to side. So giving that back rib cage a little massage, right? The back ribs, so we have that rib cage where we think of the ribs, we point to the front of the body, but the ribs actually wrap all the way around the back. So with COVID and respiratory illnesses, we could get a real stiff rib cage, right? Stiff back, stiff shoulders. Bring the knees to center. Let's stretch both feet up to the sky. Feet flexed, feet hip width apart. Spread the toes, clench the toes, spread the toes, clench the toes. Work your feet a little bit. Again, letting the lymph fluid drain from the feet and ankles all the way down. Relax your toes and we'll take a slow yoga walk one knee bends opposite foot stretches up to the sky you want to push up through the heel so get a nice extension on the whole back of the leg try not to keep the knee too bent as you you do this we want to really stretch the leg so even if that means the the legs the feet move a little bit further away from you to get a better extension on the back of the legs then just modify to let that leg stretch all the way out. Good, let's bring both knees back into the chest. Use your core, use your abdominals. Don't let your waistline lift. 
we're going to bring the feet down to the mat. They can come down one at a time. Once the feet are on the mat, let's bring the bottoms of the feet together, knees open for recline cobbler's pose. So we want to open the groin area here. That's where we have major lymph nodes. You could take yoga blocks and place them on the outer thighs. So let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. If you have yoga blocks or cushions from your couch or something, you place them on the outer thigh. And if you can kind of maneuver them and angle them so that this angle side of the block is kind of into the floor instead of into your thigh so the blocks are kind of tilted and it just helps the thighs relax the hips relax arms come out to your side in a t position palms are up adjust the shoulders so here we want to take big slow belly breaths to help move lymph fluid through the major lymph nodes in the groin area the hip area and the armpit area. So we want to relax the hips and the legs as much as possible. That's where, there's where the blocks or your support, your cushions come in handy. So uh, we're not having to um, tense up the muscles. The, the, the thighs can relax, the hips can relax. And we want to, want to relax the shoulders and arms. When our muscles are tight, the lymph fluid doesn't move through the lymph nodes quite as easily. Uh, it's more constricted. So relax and breathe. Belly breaths, not just nose breaths, but belly breaths. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, belly falls. So this pose right here, excellent for boosting your immune system. Looks like you're not really doing anything, but you're really aiding that flow of lymph fluid and the cleaning of the lymph fluid through the lymph nodes. Just maybe thinking to yourself silently, saying to yourself, my immune system is working perfectly. Okay, let's come out of it. We'll bring the arms down by our side. If you had blocks or cushions there, go ahead and just set them off to the side. We'll just hug the knees into the chest and roll side to side a bit. Bring our knees to center, use your core. Don't let the back arch. We're gonna bring those feet back down to the mat. So just adjust hips and shoulders. Knees are bent, knees stacked over the heels. Arms at your side, palms up. We're gonna work on a pelvic tilt. So we inhale, press the tailbone down into the mat. The waistline lifts up off the mat. And then exhale, press the waistline down, tailbone curls up. So we're not lifting the hips, we're just rocking that hip and pelvis forward and back. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. So the only thing lifting off the mat really is the waistline. So we're matching this movement with our breath. Our breath is slow, and so the movement is slow. And what this is doing is just helping to loosen up any stiffness in the body, in the spine, in the low back, in the hips. We can get kind of stiff when we've been laying around feeling a little under the weather and we can get stiff just from the body aches that a, a virus can give us. Bring that hips, uh, pelvis to neutral. One at a time, stretch the legs out and just let the legs relax. So front of the hips open, back of the knees open and blood flows now just <clears throat> able to move down the legs and all the way back down to the feet. So just a couple belly breaths here. Relax the arms and shoulders. And then wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Let's take a full body stretch. Stretch both arms up overhead, palms face the sky. Spread your fingers, flex the feet, and then slowly stretch one side of the body longer and then the other side of the body longer. So you want your hips and shoulders to shift on the mat. Nice and slow side to side movement with your breath. Let's bring arms and legs to center, arms come down by your side. We're gonna bend our knees, bring the feet to the floor. Let's roll over onto your side, either side, and use your arms to come up all the way up to sitting. 
once you're up to sitting, we're going to come on to hands and knees, table pose. So if you need a little extra cushioning under your knees, grab uh, a blanket or a folded towel to cushion under the knees. We're gonna be in table pose, wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Fingers spread nice and wide, index fingers parallel. So we're gonna go into cat and cow. Cat and cow is just going to work the whole back uh, and, and help us to breathe uh, with, with our movement. So gentle movements. Let's exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, pull the belly button up, inhale, tilt the hips, arch the back, let the belly stretch. Exhale, rounding, shoulder blades spread apart. <clears throat> Inhale, arching, shoulder blades kind of squeeze together. So working that upper back and chest. So just slow, gentle movements with this cat-cow pose. Working the ribs, the rib cage, the, the back and the front of the body. Exhale, rounding. Inhale, arching. Good. Come to neutral. We're going to shift back into child's pose. And for this child's pose, we're going to use that block or if you had a folded bath towel. So you're going to uh, place the block down. And we want just the forehead to rest on the block. So it gives us a little bit more space <coughs> in the chest. Let your arms and shoulders relax. I think I need a little cough drop here. <coughs> Still got just a little cough from COVID. <coughs> so just resting here, breathing into the whole back body. Breathe into the belly. Resting in child's pose. Let the upper back relax. Take a few breaths into the rib cage. And then we're going to go into an extended child's pose to the side. You're going to use that block again to rest your forehead on it. You'll have to adjust how close it is to you. But we'll stay in that child's pose. Stretch your hands as far forward as they'll go elbows or up off the mat. Start to walk the hands over to the right off the mat. And slide that block so that your forehead rests on it. And you're reaching to the right, but I want you to lean into the left rib cage. So <clears throat> leaning into the left rib cage, left shoulder, left side body, and lean into that left hip. Tuck the left hip down towards your left heel and take some nice slow breaths here. We have a little compression on the right side of the belly, so that helps with digestion and elimination. Good, we're gonna come out of this. So pick up the head and we'll walk the hands back to the center of the mat. Move that block <clears throat> over to the left and off the mat. And then we're gonna walk those hands. Your elbows are up off the mat and then adjust that block so that it's under your forehead. We're reaching to the left, but lean into the right, right shoulder, right rib cage, right hip. And kind of tuck that right hip down towards the right heel. <clears throat> so we're getting a big stretch on that right rib cage as we breathe deeply into the belly and have a little bit more compression here now on the left side of the belly. So the descending side of the colon, we're helping uh, waist move through the body when we do that right to the left movement of the low belly. And let's come out of it. Let's pick up the head. We're going to walk the hands back to center and then you can set that block back in front of you. We're going to do um, a thread the needle from child's pose. So the block will be for the side of your head. So we're in child's pose with the arms stretching as far forward as they'll go. We're going to take our right arm out to the right, a little twist to the right, and then we're going to thread the right hand through that left side. And then you can adjust that <clears throat> block under the right side of the head. So your right palm is facing up left side and then just stretch your left hand a little bit further forward and just press your left fingers into the floor so the palm of the hand is tented up off of the mat and we're just breathing into that outer right shoulder breathe into the belly breathe into the whole rib cage 
and then we'll slide the left hand back by the block and lift yourself back up come back into that extended child's pose with both hands stretching forward elbows up off the mat we're going to lift the left arm out to the left a little twist and then we'll exhale thread the left arm through the right side and you can adjust that block under the left side of the head so your right palm your left palm is out to the right side the palm is facing up and then walk those left i'm sorry walk the right fingers a little further forward <clears throat> and just your right fingertips press into the floor the palm is tented up and we'll breathe into that outer left shoulder breathe into the whole rib cage breathe into the low belt breathe into the low back so slide that right hand back by the block lift yourself back up into a sitting pose you can set that block aside come back into hands and knees table wrists under the shoulders knees under the hips <clears throat> and we're going to take three cat poses exhale round the spine inhale arch exhale round so this is great for your breathing and your rib cage right, one more exhale round and inhale and arch we're gonna come all the way down onto our belly for locust. <clears throat> so locust is called a prone pose because we're on our belly and prone poses are recommended for people with ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. syndrome. So we're gonna do locust pose um, to just help with our respiration. So come all the way down, your arms are gonna be uh, by your side, palms are up, foreheads resting on the mat. We're going to firm up the legs, firm up the bottom, and then lift your arms up off the mat, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift your head and chest, and lengthen your neck. Don't lift your chin too high. Now engage the legs and lift the legs and the feet up off the floor. Keep squeezing shoulder blades together. Keep engaging, reaching through the fingertips. Toes are pointed and reach through the toes and breathe. Good, one more big breath if you can. And then exhale, lower down, stack your hands on top of each other, rest your forehead on stacked hands. Let's curl the toes under and push the heels away from you, let your knees lift up off the mat. So just a big stretch for the arches and the legs. Then relax the the legs and the feet, slide the hands under the shoulders, lift yourself up into hands and knees table, and then we're gonna shift back into child's pose just for a couple breaths. So here you could use that block if you like the block under the forehead, or let the forehead <clears throat> rest on the mat or stacked hands. This is just a little counter pose to locust, uh, just works the spine in the opposite direction that locust was. Good. From, from this pose, from this child's pose, we're going to take one downward dog. So <clears throat> you can set that block aside if you were using it. Stretch your hands as far forward as they'll go, elbows up off the mat. Come up to hands and knees. You can move the knees a little closer if they were pretty wide for child's pose. Fingers spread nice and wide, index fingers parallel to each other and pointing straight ahead. Curl the toes under. Inhale with your exhale, lift up, shift back, downward dog. Spread the toes out on the mat, and then we'll low, bend one knee and bend the opposite knee, or lower one heel and then the other heel. So downward dog is a slight inversion, so bringing blood to the head and uh, the sinuses, the throat, and uh, it also just stretches the whole body, especially if we've been kind of um, sedentary while we've been a little bit under the weather. Good, let's bring the heels level with each other. Come down to knees, shift back into child's pose, just for a few breaths, maybe wobble a little side to side, a few wrist circles or wiggle the fingers and just breathe into the whole back. Good, then we're gonna make our way up to sitting. So come up to sitting, we're gonna swing the feet around. If you had padding there, you can kind of scoot it out of the way. 
Um, you could also use it, we're gonna go into staff pose with the legs straight out in front of us. So you could always use that patty, um, and I'll show you how that is. You use the patty right under the sitting bones to keep you from uh, rounding the low back. So you have that little cushion there. You sit just on the edge. You don't sit way in the middle of it. You sit right on the edge of it. We're gonna stretch the legs out. Feet are flexed, legs together, feet together. And then have the hands down by your side. So this is called staff pose. And, and what this, how this helps us with COVID recovery is for our posture. It, it uses our postural muscles. Our core and back muscles are getting um, worked here. So when we have better posture, we have better breathing. When we sit rounded and slumped, we're not able to take those full breaths. So sitting tall, it might look like we're not doing anything, but we are doing it. You can even bend your knees a little bit if that helps you with rounding of the low back. We don't want any rounding in the low back. So if you're feeling that rounding, just bend your knees a little bit. That'll tilt your pelvis a little bit further forward. Good, then we're gonna come out of that. So if you like the use of that blanket under the hips, you can use that for the next one. The next one is cobbler's pose. So for cobbler's pose, we're gonna sit with the bottoms of the feet together, knees open. So here, we're gonna support our upper body with our hands. So bring the hands back behind you. <clears throat> My fingers are kind of pointing away from me. Press the hands into the floor to lengthen the spine and lift up. Lift up and squeeze the shoulder blades together now. Lift your chin a little bit and take some big breaths into the chest, into the low belly. So we're getting some length in the spine, getting a stretch in the hips and legs. And we're opening the heart and we're taking some nice, big, slow breaths here. Good. Now we're going to uh, take the hands forward. We're going to go into a side stretch. So let's stretch our right leg out to the right, and our left heel is in the midline of the body. Right hand is going to be on the right leg, left fingertips on the mat next to you. Now for this one, we're gonna be bending to the side. You could, if it bothers your shoulder, you can always have your one hand on your hip. So we're gonna inhale and we're gonna lift that left arm up. Exhale, relax, left shoulder down. Inhale again and as you exhale, we're gonna to lean to the right and your right hand can slide down the leg. So here's where you could always have this hand on the hip if it bothers your shoulder to have it lifted. Now we wanna rotate our chest a little bit up towards the sky more than facing the floor, the mat. So even if that means coming up a little higher so that you can get that little rotation. Big breath, so now we're working on the side body, opening up the side body. That last pose, cobbler's pose, we were opening up the front body. But we're gonna come out of this, so inhale and bring that uh, left hand down beside you. Keep it on the mat now and we're gonna bend to the other side. So right fingertips on the floor, or you could have right hand on the right hip. We're gonna inhale, right hand up, exhale, relax, right shoulder down. Now bend your left elbow, and we're gonna lean over to the left. Same thing, we want a little rotation up to the sky rather than to the mat. A couple nice big breaths into our side body. Good, we're gonna inhale, come up, Bring that right hand down and we're going to switch sides so the right foot comes in and the left foot stretches out this right foot kind of line it up with the midline of the body left foot flexed we're going to have the left hand on the left leg right fingertips on the mat next to you or you can have right hand on the right hip inhale the right hand up exhale relax the right shoulder down inhale again exhale and lean to your left so we want the ear right over or we want the arm right over the ear, we don't want the arm forward. So if the arm's forward, probably means you have a tight shoulder, just bring your hand to the hip. Little rotation up towards the ceiling, even if you have to come up a little higher to get that rotation. Big, slow, deep breaths. Keep that left foot flexed, you're feeling probably a stretch on this inner thigh. <clears throat> We're gonna inhale, come up, Bring the right hand down to the mat, left fingertips on the mat here, 
or left hand on the left hip. We're going to inhale, left arm up. Exhale, relax, left shoulder down. Now we're going to bend the right elbow and lean to the right. Good. Little rotation up towards the sky. Nice slow breaths. Good, we're gonna come out of it, inhale, come up and exhale, bring the left hand down. And then we're going to bring both legs out in front of us. Lean back on your hands and just windshield wiper the feet, let your legs relax and hips relax a little bit there. We're gonna come all the way down onto our back for a spinal twist on each side. So spinal twists <clears throat> are great for detoxing and balancing the body. So come all the way down. Let's hug the knees into the chest before we go into that spinal twist. Just roll side to side a bit, just kind of uh, evening out that back body. Bring your knees to center, use your core, feet come to the mat. Stretch your left leg out, left foot flexed. Exhale, bring the right knee in. We're gonna have the left hand on the right knee, right arm at your side, right palm is up. Both feet are flexed, inhale with your exhale, Take that right knee over to the left. Now you might pick up the shoulders and shift them to the left a little bit. That's gonna keep the right shoulder down on the mat. We want the right shoulder on the mat. If the right shoulder has lifted, then bring your knee a little bit higher. So we want the whole chest, collarbone, shoulders facing straight up towards the sky. Big, slow breaths into the belly. So this, uh, Spinal twists are great for detoxing, um, digestion, and elimination of waste in the body, and just balancing the body's energy in general. I usually just keep my head centered here, but if it feels good for you to turn your head to one side or the other, you can do that. The main thing is that you're taking big, slow breaths deep into the low belly. We'll come out of this side. Inhale, bring the right knee up and right foot to the floor. Bend your left knee. <clears throat> and then just adjust hips and shoulders. Get even on the mat. Right leg stretches out, right foot flexed. Exhale, bring the left knee in. We're going to have right hand on the left knee. Left arm at your side, palm is up. Right, Both feet flexed. We always twist with an exhale. So inhale first and then exhale. We take the left knee over to the right. So here you can see my left shoulder has lifted off the mat. So that's incorrect for this pose. I'm going to pick up my upper body, shift it to the right a little bit, and that's going to allow my left shoulder to uh, rest back down on the mat. Or I could simply have lifted my left knee a little bit higher. Just make sure that both shoulders, the collarbone, the whole chest is facing straight up to the sky, not to the right. Big breaths into the low belly. And just get your neck comfortable looking straight up or over either shoulder. All the work of this pose is here in the belly, the twisting and compression of the belly. And then, and then those deep breaths, right? So yes, we could just twist and not breathe deeply. We won't get the same benefit as if we're breathing, getting that breath into the low belly. <clears throat> it's like wringing out a washcloth, this, these twisting postures, cleaning the body up. Let's come out of it. Inhale, left knee comes up, left foot to the floor. Let's bend the right knee, just tips and shoulders. Hug the knees into the chest, hands on the knees. Let's circle both knees in a clockwise circle. Nice, slow clockwise circle just to give a little circular massage for our low back our hips. Let's circle counterclockwise now. Bring the knees to center. Use your core. Bring the feet down to the mat. I'm going to roll over onto your side, either side. Use your hands to come all the way up to sitting. And we're going to work on those two breathing techniques. So sit comfortably. You can sit in a chair. I'm going to sit on a yoga block. <clears throat> but for breathing techniques, you want to make sure that you're not rounding and slumping. So sometimes if we sit flat on the floor, we tend to round the low back and slump. So we want to 
scoot the tailbone back a little bit, lift the heart a little bit, sitting nice and tall, or just sit uh, <clears throat> on a couch or in, in a chair. <clears throat> so the first one is alternate nostril breathing. Um, our body does this naturally about every 45 minutes. One nostril is more dominant than the other nostril. So what we're doing when we're going to close off one nostril and breathe out and in through the other one, close that one, breathe out and in through the opposite one, and we're going to alternate. When we do this using the, the, our fingers to help it, it's just kind of speeding along that little, that little alternate breathing that happens every, about every 45 minutes. So for about 45 minutes, the right nostril will be more open. And for the next 45 minutes, the left nostril, then your body switches. You don't even probably realize it through the day. So <clears throat> for this one, the left palm is going to be up on your left leg or your left knee. We're going to use the right thumb to close the right nostril and the right ring finger to close the left nostril. And you don't have to push very hard on the nostril. Just close it off. Our gaze is either going to be down to just take out stimulation from the eyes or the eyes are closed. <clears throat> so we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna start with the right thumb closing the right nostril. We're gonna inhale through the left. Close the left with the ring finger. Exhale right. Nice slow exhale. Inhale right. Close the right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Close the left. Exhale right. Inhale right, close it, exhale left, inhale left, close the left, exhale right, inhale right, close the right, exhale left, inhale left, close the left, exhale right, inhale right, close the right. Exhale left, inhale left, close the left, exhale right, inhale right, close the right, last one, exhale left, inhale left, and now bring the right hand down to your right leg, sit tall, breathe through both nostrils, you might find that there one was more open or closed than the other. Remember not to slump, not to round the shoulders or round the low back. Good, and then blink the eyes, shake out the hands. So we just did a few rounds there. You can do that um, five to 10 rounds throughout the day just to help the breathing. Uh, I think you'll find a lot of benefit from it. The next one we're gonna do is B breath or Brahmari breath. <clears throat> so we're gonna make a hum, on the exhale, we're gonna make a humming sound in the throat, kind of like in the back of the throat. <clears throat> we're gonna inhale through the nose and the, the whole exhale is gonna be long. You'll, you'll find that you can actually take probably a longer exhale when you're humming. So it's gonna sound like that, like a bumblebee, like mm, like that noise. Um, it helps to bring energy and blood flow to the throat to help kind of clear out throat congestion. And then we'll be plugging the ears with the thumbs. So you, it'll bring some um, heat and energy to the ears too, right? Ear, nose, and throat all get affected with respiratory um, things. So we're going to use the thumbs. Don't do it just yet so you can hear me. Uh, we're going to take the thumbs to close the ears. So you can just close that little flap of the ear, like just kind of push it down. Or you can stick the thumb gently into the ear if your fingernails aren't too long. The index finger will be right above the brow. There's lots of variations of it, but this is the one I'm going to teach you. Index finger will be right above the brow. The other three fingers just lightly cover the eyelids just to kind of shut out light and sensation. So once we get that configuration with the hands, we take a nice slow inhale through the nose and then we exhale nice and long <clears throat> that buzzing breath. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do five rounds. You might finish before or after me, but I'll do five rounds. Then we'll sit like we did on after the last breathing technique with the palms up and just kind of breathe normally. And you, 
you might feel warmth or heat in the throat or warmth or heat in the ears. All right, so let's try it. The ears, uh, we're gonna plug the ears with the thumbs, index fingers above the brow, the other three fingers just lightly cover the eyelids. We're sitting tall, no slumping, no rounding. We're gonna inhale through the nose, nice and long, exhale and hum. Mm -hmm. Inhaling. Last round. Mm. Bring the arms down, palms facing up, back of the hands resting on the legs. Sit tall. Feel maybe warmth in the throat, warmth in the ears. Bramari is very good for calming the body, calming the mind, bringing healing energy to the throat, to the ears, working our lungs so we get this extra long exhale. We're usually able to exhale longer uh, with that breath. And blink the eyes, <clears throat> shake out the hands a little bit. Let's come down for just a quick final relaxation. So come all the way down onto your back. <clears throat> and you can have legs stretched out or knees bent. See what feels best for you. <clears throat> Arms at your side, palms are up. Little tuck of the chin and then relax the neck, and the shoulders, relax the arms and legs and the upper back, the mid back, the low back, all relax. Take those slow breaths into the belly. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, belly falls. Silently making an affirmation to yourself that <clears throat> your immune system is working perfectly. That you are healthy and healing that the lymph fluid is circulating freely and working its magic in the body like it always does. Just feel your breath, feel those nice slow breaths. Letting the belly rise with the inhale, fall with the exhale. Bring your awareness to the nostrils. See if you can feel which nostril might be a little bit more open. They might feel even, but one might feel definitely more open than the other. If they feel pretty even, bring your awareness to the rim of the nostril. See if there's more sensation or tingling or airflow felt around the edge, the rim of the nostril. See if you can feel more airflow on one side or the other. It's usually the side that has more tingling or sensation is the side that's more open if they feel pretty even. Relaxing and re relaxing. Mm. 
So staying here in this final relaxation, as long as you have time for, as long as you want. If you're ready to come out with me, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Do some little movement to the body. And then we'll bend the knees and roll over onto one side. And then use your arms to help you up to sitting nice and slow. Sitting comfortably, cross-legged, on a block, on a couch, in a chair. Tailbone's going to move back slightly, heart lifts slightly. Belly pulls in and up a little bit. Let the shoulders relax. Feel grounded down through your seat. Tall up through the crown of the head. Remember those postural muscles so we can breathe better. We'll bring the palms together, thumbs at the heart. And this ends our practice today. Namaste. So I hope you liked... Um, yoga for COVID recovery. Um, I hope it helped. If some of the poses, if you're still really recovering, maybe some of the poses were a little bit much for you. So you just do the best you can with them, maybe not holding them as long as we did. Um, just take it little by little and, and really trying to work on the breath and really trying to move. So lymph fluid is moved. We moved it with gravity, right? When our feet were up towards the sky, but lymph fluid is also moved through movement. So walking, um, swimming, um, uh, just walking around, any kind of movement. Uh, when we sit on the couch or lay down all day, we're, we're very, our body becomes very stagnant. The lymph fluid's not moving. So we, even though we don't feel like it, when we don't feel good, we do need to get up and walk around a little bit. Um, it's also, lymph fluid's also moved from uh, massage. So a little massage or just even rubbing your skin, putting on some lotion will help move lymph fluid. And then we can work on that recline cobbler's pose where we open the groin, open the armpit. <clears throat> and just trying to take nice breaths and lots of water to thin down all the mucus. And um, vitamin C, get in the sunshine, get some vitamin D, zinc, um, all those natural things that are good for us. No sugar. Sugar helps keep our immune system down. So I hope that this helped you. Um, if you know someone who you think might benefit from it, please share it with them. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, leave me a comment if you have any questions. And that all of that, all of what you do, liking it, sharing it, leaving a comment, helps YouTube recommend me um, to other people. So that helps people find me. So... I hope uh, you recover well. I hope each day you're feeling better. And until next time, bye-bye.